So the chief priests and scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by trickery and put him to death. They said,
Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open, and he did not know what to answer, and they did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping? Taking your rest? It is enough. <coughs> the hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by the crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him, and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out as against the robber, swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest, and all the chief priests and the elders and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard, and was seated with the, with the guards, warming himself at the fire. The chief priest and the, the chief priest and the enter Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, He heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another upon made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power, coming with the clouds of heaven. At that, the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said to him, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too are the best of Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you were talking about. So he went out into the courtyard, then the crop crowed. The maid saw him and began again to say to the bystanders, This man is not dead. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystanders said to Peter once more, Surely you are one of them, for you too are Galilee. He began to curse and to swear, I do not know this man about whom you were talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priest with the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him off, handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned, Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply, You say so. The chief priest accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to, to them one prisoner whom they requested. A 
Nim Barabbas was in prison along with the, with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask him to do to do for them as he as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priest stirred up the crowd to have him have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate again said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is the Praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed, they clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns placed it on him, they began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! And kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had, and they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloth cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to be led him out to crucify him. They pressed him to serve as a passerby, Simon the Cyrenian, who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus, to carry his cross. They brought him to the place Gogotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him they crucified two revolutionaries, one on each his right and one on his left. Those passing by revealed him, shaking their head and saying, uh -huh. Tomb that had been hewn out of rock. 
Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 